Most people aren't big on boundaries. But as a mom of four small children, I love that we have a fenced-in backyard because that fence is there for both them and for me, and the promise of worry-free safety is really what makes it work. Most people don't like the B word. You know, I'm talking about a budget here. And the crazy thing about a budget is it's actually like a fence around your money. Now, you can have fun within your fence, but that safety net or that budget provides you that extra security of where you tell your money to go. So instead of stressing about money the rest of your life, stick to a budget. You can still have fun with your money, but it just gives you that security and that extra boundary to keep your money safe. I'm Lauren, the frugal living expert and author of the book, The Recovering Spender. For years, I was out of control with my spending and obsessed with living the American dream. That was until I took a hard look at my values, changed my lifestyle, and won my life back. Today, I help women live the simpler, happier life they've always dreamed of. Recovering spenders just like me. We're probably, well, we are $27,000 in debt. I did want finer things. I felt like I had worked my way up in um, the hospital and I made really good money. Andy makes good money. We should be able to afford to have these nicer things. So we found ourselves starting to get behind because, you know, as your kids get older, there's more soccer games, there's more football games, there's more outings with friends, vacations. It seemed like all of our friends had a lot of money to be able to go do those things, and we didn't, but we still wanted to do them. So then you found yourself one payment behind, um, two payments behind, and how are we gonna make it up? And then you kind of got so far behind. For me, one of the biggest points was watching my son. He had a paper route and he caddies on the weekends, and I would deposit his money into his bank account and sometimes take a 20 because I needed to pay for something else. Um, Andy wasn't on board yet and he says to me, well, I don't think we need to do that. I don't think we need to air our dirty laundry out to everybody. And I looked at him and said, we are just like alcoholics or drug addicts. If we don't admit that we have a problem, we can't solve it. That we can't keep playing this game of we have money, we look like we have money, we really don't have any money. I felt like it would bring me just a little bit of peace in my life to know that people knew and I didn't have to keep pretending. Oh, yes. looky here. I'm gonna go to the Derby, so if I buy a hat, then someday I will Wait. go. The Kentucky Derby? Mm -hmm. But you've never been to the Derby? No, but, but if you I have buy the hat, I will go to the <laughs> Derby. <laughs> okay, that sounds like a plan. Show me where the hidden bags are. This Whoa. one. How many of these are under the bed? Um, there's one on every side, because there's no room in the closet. Oh my goodness. Yeah, you never can have like too many patent leather purses. This is a, a few thousand dollars worth of purses. Um, not, I mean, including the ones that are still under there that we haven't even pulled out yet. So what does that feel like? I've, I have thousands of dollars worth of purses here, but, but yet, you know, you're late on, on bills. I think when you spread them all out mm -hmm. and you look, and when you think about the time you spent shopping for them, mm -hmm versus spending it with your kids or your family, it's not worth it. See, I think people, people often think about budgeting as like you have to give away everything and not have any fun, but that's not the way it is. It, it really gives you life to what you already like to do, but just within a certain boundary. Let me tell you, when I was getting, doing this and buying all the purses, 
because I've been here and I've had purses, I mean, not under my bed, but in my, in my closet, I've had these and I sold them all and I paid off $2,000 worth of debt. So I get it, like I get it. And you can still have nice things, but a deal isn't a good deal if you can't afford it. All right, well, thank you guys for being here with me today. I know yeah. this is hard, but what I've done is gone through what you spent last month and figured out some ways to really cut that back. And my goal for today is that we can set a budget that you can look at for this next upcoming month. Now, one thing that we do, me and my husband do every single month, we do it the first Sunday of every month, is that we get together and we do what we call the budget night. And we sit down for an hour and we plan our whole month out what that's gonna look like. And that goes down to, you know, the dollar, but not in the sense of like budgeting, like you have to like, this is not like, we're gonna save all the receipts in a box and go through and like itemize and do all that. What we're gonna do is, is it's called perspective budgeting. So you do the whole month ahead of time and then you give yourself some wiggle room within that budget so that you can go out to coffee with friends and you can True. go out for lunch. Cause you don't, you know, you have a life to live. So you, mm -hmm. you don't want to lose your life. Mm -hmm. um, and the fun things that you do, I mean, you want to drink your beer that you love, yeah, you love, sure. <laughs> yeah. and you're giving family too. Yes. You guys love to volunteer. You're very active in your community. So those are the things that you value, mm -hmm. some of your values. Yeah. So we don't want to lose those. We just need to make sure that you can afford and, and set a right. budget around those items. Okay. I want to share these numbers with you and some of them might be shocking to you, but I just wanted to share uh, random miscellaneous shopping was four hundred and seventy six dollars, um, but the biggest thing is that you took one thousand seven hundred and fifty eight dollars and eighty cents out of the ATM. Mm -hmm. Wow! And we have no idea where that went. Yep. Do you guys have any idea? Like, is that like we went to the gas station and you, or you went here? It's, it, I think it's sort of the, you know, like we talked about earlier, the $20 here for this, for the mm -hmm. kids and this, and $20 here for that. I think it just, it just winds up adding up. Have you ever budgeted before? Or what comes up for you when you hear the word budget? We've never budgeted before. Okay. You know, we've... We have some really good Excel spreadsheets. Okay. Yes. Do you use yes. this? No. No. <laughs> I love putting them together, but we never use oh, them. Oh, yeah, hours okay. to put together. Wow. Um, and like the first month, we'd be like, oh, look, we could, you know, if we put all this money here. And, we and then the next month it. came. Yep. And I would, you know. So just for the time being to say yes to the best things and no to mm -hmm. the things that aren't going to help you with these goals is going to be really important for you guys in this next month True. to really focus on that. Um, and remind yourselves to stay within the fence. Yep. yep. I'm ready. You can find all of these helpful budgeting tips in my book, The Recovering Spender. And I want to share with you a few other early steps that you can take early on. So here they are. Take an inventory of your spending. Note where your spending weaknesses are. And make a list of all the people who you owe money to, starting with family. Bridget and Andy still have a ways to go, but they are making great progress. So I will check back in with them in a month and see where they are on their journey to financial freedom.